Hey, Dr. Mike here. What's missing from your vegan diet? Stay tuned to find out with our guest and friend of Live Forever Ish, registered dietitian Holly Ryan. You're listening to Live Forever Ish, a show dedicated to helping you live just a little longer. Here's your hosts, Dr. Mike and Dr. Crystal Gosser. All right, welcome to Live Forever Ish. I'm really excited to have Holly Ryan, registered dietitian and a good friend of Live Forever Ish. Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you. You know, we've, you know, you, normally when you're on with me, you're making me eat foods or taste things that I'm not sure if I want to taste and try, but you make me do it. Um, that's on our live show. Uh, but it's great to have you on. You know, you're kind of our food and nutrition expert. And we wanted to talk about the vegan diet today. Um, you know, more and more that seems to be becoming uh, popular. Um, and, and we know that there are some nutritional issues that we wanted to kind of discuss with you. But I thought before we get into that, can you just give us, because there seems to be a lot of variations of these diets now too. So what's, what's, the, what's the strict definition of a vegan diet and are there some health benefits associated with it? Very true. There are so many varying types of uh, plant-based diets. So a strict vegan diet. So a vegan diet is a type of plant-based diet, right? Um, it excludes all foods of animal origin. Sometimes it may even exclude byproducts such as honey, right? Honey is a byproduct of a living organism. So a strict vegan may exclude honey from their diet. There are also, um, there's also a raw vegan diet, um, which is uh, uncooked foods, emphasizes, you know, primarily 75 to 100 percent uncooked. Uh, then you have vegetarian diets, of course. Now, the term vegetarian, it is very general. So it may or may not include eggs or dairy. Um, so there are a lot of variations of vegetarian diets. There are pescatarians who consume fish. There are lacto-ovo vegetarians who consume eggs and dairy, but no meat. Um, <clears throat> there are also... Lacto vegetarians, dairy, and no eggs. So the it's combinations so are kind now. of endless. <laughs> um, it, is. And it is. One of the <laughs> newer terms um, is flexitarian. Oh, um, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so all of the diets we just discussed, with the exception of flexitarian, exclude meat and poultry from the eating patterns. So, flexitarian is a little bit different in the sense that it's flexible. You can maybe eat. It's up to you if you want to include meat or poultry once a week, once a month. Basically, you're not putting it off the table completely. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so back to the so the vegan diet, all basically all plant based, no animal, maybe even some derivatives like honey is not allowed. So that's right. kind of where we're starting. Why? Why do we want to do this? I mean, it, it is growing in popularity. Is is it just a fad, or is there really good science behind a vegan diet? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, plant-based vegan diets, there are some benefits, you know, fruit and vegetables are of course, nutritious foods, rich in antioxidants, fiber, so many different healthy compounds. Um, but there, there is some research supporting that people who follow a vegan diet are more likely to have beneficial gut bacteria, um, more likely to maintain a healthy body weight, um, better heart health, reduced risk of certain chronic conditions. Um, and a lot of it does go back to that fruit and vegetable intake, um, rich in those phytonutrients and low in saturated fat, which is going to help with your cholesterol profile, um, glu better glucose control, and all of these factors contribute to reduce risk of chronic disease. Yeah, I know for sure. And there's research, you know, vegetarian or not, flexitarian, whatever, plant, you know, eating more plants, eating more fruits and vegetables every day has been shown over and over again to be beneficial <laughs> at the end of the day uh, for all of us. Um, but there are some issues with the vegan diet, correct? So I know you wrote an article recently um, about these nutritional deficiencies that you can get in a vegan diet. Um, what, what are some, well, let me just, let me ask you this before we get into that. Overall, is a vegan diet going to meet your basic nutritional needs overall? So yes, but there is a, a caveat, right? Um, it takes a lot of planning and diligence to make sure you're meeting your, your nutrient needs. So yes, it is possible to avoid nu 
nutrient deficiencies while enjoying the benefits of a plant-based diet. It takes a lot of planning. So what are, so, uh, you know, you and I were discussing this before the show. Um, I think there's something like nine nutrients that you, you're concerned about for vegans. Um, what, you, when you look at that list, what are, let, let's say, the top four of five that we need to discuss on this show so people can be aware? Yeah, for sure. Let, we can go through some of those. So one of the top ones is actually going to be vitamin B12. So B12, it's found in a variety of foods of animal origin. Only trace amounts are found in plant foods. Um, some foods are fortified with B12. Cereal, nutritional yeast is a big one, which has that cheesy umami flavor. Um, those are fortified with B12, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough um, to meet your your requirements for B12. So supplementation of B12 is actually going to be uh, necessary following a vegan diet. You know, it's funny you bring up the, the you know, fortifying foods and stuff like that. And in some cases, I think that's great that we do that. But you're right. In most cases, it's still really not enough to really get you to that optimal level. Because, you know, on our show, Holly, Dr. Chris and I always talk about what does it mean to live forever to live forever ish? And that means a strong, vibrant, um, expanded health span, as as Crystal likes to say it. Um, in order to do that, there's a lot of things that have to happen, but we believe in optimal levels right. of, of those nutrients, like B12, for example. And fortifying some B12 in cereal, probably not gonna get you there. <laughs> right. So supplementation, I do think is key. What else is on your list? So another one is iron. Um, it's an important mineral. It helps oxygenate the body. Um, when we talk about iron in foods, there's actually two forms. Um, so heme iron is found predominantly in the blood and muscle, um, which is why it's going to be found in meat and animal products. Um, there's also non-heme iron, which is going to be present in both plant and animal sources, um, but Non-heme iron can be found in plant-based sources such as nuts, beans, vegetables, and iron-fortified grains. So this, you know, that sounds great. There's all these foods that are suitable for vegans that um, contain iron. But the problem is it differs in the absorption and bioavailability compared to the heme iron. So heme iron, it's better absorbed, has a higher bioavailability. Um and actually up to 40% of heme iron uh, from sources such as lean meat, seafood are absorbed by the body. But on the other hand, non-heme, uh, 10, only 10% 10 or less is being absorbed. Well, wow, so that, yeah, so the heme form is better. I, I wonder if this is why um, some of the brands out there that are making the plant-based hamburgers and stuff and meats, they're adding heme into um the the recipe to make it and i, I and i think yeah, maybe that's going to help to get some iron in but i think heme itself also kind of gives you the meaty yeah kind of a meaty taste or something to it good yeah good point and it, and i think it also contributes to that red color to kind of mimicking the yeah, appearance looks, of meat yeah it looks more like a hamburger right <laughs> yeah so you know because of this um the rda for iron for vegetarians and vegans it, it's actually 1.8 times higher um, then for people who eat meat, um, there is a way to help with that non-heme iron absorption, though. So if you eat vitamin C rich foods, along with those iron containing plant foods, you can actually uh, absorb more of that non-heme iron. So that's B12 and iron. What's next on your list? Yeah. So another one is zinc. Um, zinc, as you may be familiar, very important for immune system function, protein synthesis. Um, it is. It is present in a variety of grains, but again, we run into a bioavailability issue. So um, these foods also contain phytates, um, which can actually inhibit the absorption of that zinc. So even if you're consuming all of these grains and other foods, um, you may not be getting all that zinc. So uh, according to the National Institute of Health, people who are on plant-based diets sometimes require as much as 50% uh, more zinc than those on a non-plant-based diet to compensate for that absorption. Wow, that's a, that's a big part. I did not know that. So very important that you watch your zinc levels then while yes. on a vegan diet. Um, I'm pretty sure on your list next, I don't know if it's next, but I think it's on your list, are omega-3s, right? Yeah, omega-3 did make the list. Um, 
you know, so we, we largely obtain omega threes, like DHA from fatty fish, salmon, um, fish oil, of course, but you know, it's actually one that's difficult for vegans and non-vegans alike to get enough of. Um, so if you are vegan, consider supplementing with an algae derived DHA, um, to get your DHA. So there is a common misconception that I wanted to bring up. Um, and this is regarding things like nuts and seeds, like chia and flax seeds. <clears throat> so these foods do contain omega-3s, but it's a form ALA, alpha linolenic acid. Um, so the misconception comes in is that that comes up is that ALA, people think it will cover your bases because it can convert to EPA and DHA to some extent, but the conversion efficiency is very low. So it's not going to be best to rely on nuts and seeds um, to meet your DHA needs. I mean, they can still be a great source in your diet and you know, add them, eat the nuts and seeds. It's just not going to get you enough. So supplementation with an algae-based oil is probably your best bet, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, you know, nuts and seeds, they're healthful foods for a variety of reasons, but just thinking that they will help you um, meet your optimal DHEA levels is just not accurate, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, you know, most uh, cardiovascular specialists will tell you two to four grams of total omegas uh, mm -hmm. is where you want to be, uh, you know, for, to keep your heart healthy and, and, and ticking a long time. Um, and nuts and seeds are not going to get you. That, that's a lot of nuts and seeds. <laughs> if you're going to try to do that. So supplementation is key. Um, let's move the conversation to protein because I know that's a, always a big kind of um, debate that pops up for, for vegans. Um, let me just ask if you're, if I'm, if I want to go vegan, am I going to get enough protein at the end of the day? So similar to the, to the nutrient discussion. Yes, but with a few caveats, right? So, um, you know, interestingly, Vegan diet, um, it, you're more likely to actually have an amino acid deficiency or insufficiency than a protein deficiency itself. So protein is made of amino acids, right? So commonly referred to as the building blocks of protein. Um, some are considered essential, some are non-essential. The essential ones are cannot be made by the body, right? So we have to get those from foods. Um, there are certain amino acids that are not um, present in large quantities in in plant based in plant based foods that contain protein. So um, the ones that are not those are the, considered the limiting amino acids. So leucine, lysine, um, sulfur containing amino acids such as methionine. Uh, these are the ones that um, people on a vegan diet need to ensure they're getting enough of. So previously it was thought that animal foods um, are complete protein sources while plant foods are incomplete protein sources, meaning they don't contain all of those nine essential amino acids. Um, so now research is, use, is um, you know, has shown that actually all, all plant protein sources contain all 20 amino acids, but they're only present in small amounts. So, yeah, that's I know we did a great show on all this and um, it was eye opening to me because, you know, for most of my medical career, I would refer to plant based proteins as incomplete because that's what it, 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 that's just what everybody said. Right. <laughs> no one really thought it was. Just, but it turns out that's not true. They do have all those amino acids. But as you said, maybe not enough of some of those key ones. And that's where they're limiting or, or the quality of that source is going to be lower than, say, um, an animal source. So I think that's, and, and this is pretty brand new stuff. I know there's going to be a new, I think, ranking system for quality protein, whether it's plant-based or animal source, uh, using kind of that idea, uh, uh, how much of those specific amino acids are you actually pulling from that food and getting it into your system? So I think this is a very interesting con conversation. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the quality aspect because um, there's a lot to be said about that. So, you know, it's not just about quantity when it comes to 
protein, right? So protein is measured in grams. We want to make sure we're getting a certain amount of grams daily, but also the quality of the protein. So um, protein from whole grains and legumes, it has a lower digestibility than animal protein. So protein from plants is encapsulated in plant cell walls. It makes it harder for us to digest and then utilize. So in other words, let's say a plant-based food has five grams of protein. Um, you may not actually be getting that full five grams from that food. Like that you just would from animal. Yeah. So not only, not only are maybe some of those amino acids low in, in content or concentration, digestibility is also a factor in all that and how much you're actually getting. A funny little thing. So I quizzed. So Dr. Crystal is also a, a, um, a nutritionist and I, I, quizzed her on on the show i'm gonna quiz you are you ready okay <laughs> so you have you have chickpeas to your right and you have a standard white potato to your left which one when looking at quality of protein getting and getting more of those amino acids is better for you the chickpea or the potato it's it's a trick question. Yeah, I mean, I would gravitate. <laughs> I would tend to gravitate towards the chickpeas. Of course, but, yes, yes. But, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I have seen the the Diaz scoring system. Oh, so you've seen so you've seen so, potatoes are higher actually. I am on that familiar. Score. I, that is so. That was very surprising though. I did see that um, you could actually get you could actually digest a substantial amount of uh, the the amino acids found in potatoes but yeah i would i would have said chickpeas if you asked me this like i don't know six months ago of course and the, now the chickpeas total protein content is higher than the potato but it comes down to how much am i actually getting out of that right at the end of the day yeah. and that's where the potato goes up in quality because you, you pull more of those amino acids out right it's super interesting go. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Um, so by, before we get into, I'm going to talk about um, tests that are available for vegans. Before we do that, so we talked about some nutrients. We talked about protein. Any any other nutrients you just want to throw out there to make sure they follow? Yeah, so, th you know, there are a few other ones to pay attention to. Um, calcium, interestingly yeah. enough, um, because there, there are foods, broccoli, spinach, leafy greens contain calcium, but... It's one of those that vegan or non-vegan, you just need to pay attention. I mean, you know, dairy, of course, is going to be a large source of calcium in the diet. So if you're excluding dairy, make sure you are getting enough of those greens. Um, vitamin D, yes, you can get it from the sun, but depending on where you live, if you're indoors a lot, you may not be getting enough. And then, you know, you're, you're not having those animal sources of the vitamin D like milk and fatty fish and salmon. So, um, there mushroom, there are mushrooms that contain, um, vitamin D too, if they've been some plants, you know, that have been UV exposed, but D2 is not going to raise your levels as much as D3. So, um, the other thing is when it comes to supplementation with D3, um, many sources are going to be from an animal source. So if you are looking for a vegan alternative, um, algae derived D3 is available. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, end of the day, you, you know, you know me, Holly, I'm, I don't care what diet you're on. Everybody needs to be supplementing with some form of vitamin D all the time. I mean, it's just yeah. that, to me, it's that simple. Across um, the board, that's tends to be one people are low in. So so with all of these nutritional things to consider, protein, all that, are there tests that are available for vegans that can help guide them a little bit here? Maybe I, I need to get more B12, I'm okay on protein, something that can guide them and help them? Yeah. So, you know, you could always start with a typical CBC. Um, this will tell you your iron status, your immune status. It'll just give you some of those key clues to get started. But then there's more comprehensive testing. Um, Life Extension offers a vegan vegetarian panel that looks at um, not only your CBC and your lipids, but also um, more intricate uh, measures of iron to really tell if, you know, you could be anemic or not. Um, it, it's going to look at your B12 levels, vitamin D. It's going to look at your thyroid function because another one we didn't touch on is iodine, um, which, which also, you know, it's, it's found in seaweed. So that's a good um, vegan option, but it's also found in fish. So 
if you're not big on seaweed and you're not using iodized salt, um, you may want to, you know, make sure you're getting enough iodine. Yeah, that's 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 a really good point. Um, you know, back to the the testing, um, you mentioned that 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 Life Extension offers um, an extensive test for vegans, um, and the iron is in there. And, and the specific thing they're looking at is called ferritin. That is a so if you don't want to do a big panel, but you are interested in iron, make sure your doctor adds ferritin because you can have normal iron. But if your ferritin levels are low, that's an indication that you may become iron deficient pretty soon. So ferritin is a good marker to look at. Um, so if somebody wants to start going vegan now. Have you ever been vegan, by the way? I have not. Um, I've had times where I've excluded sp- specific animal proteins in my diet and included others, but I've never been a hundred percent vegan. Yeah. Well, our producer Robson wants to go vegan. I don't know if he told you that. So what would be, what would be be somebody, he does not want to go vegan right now. He's probably yelling at his muted mic right now. Um, (laughs) But uh, for anyone who maybe wants to start a vegan diet, like what, any tips to how to do that, how to get started? Do you just, do you just have to wake up one day and say, all right, that's it. I'm done with meat. Or can you transition slowly? Like what are the things you think? So um, going back to protein for a minute. So I think that somebody who's starting a vegan diet, um, protein is a good place to start tracking. Um, So you may benefit from consuming slightly more protein in grams um, than non-vegan. So the RDA is uh, 0.8 grams per kilogram for protein. Now, a lot of, um, health professionals agree that it should be more like one gram per kilogram of body weight of protein. Um, so making sure you're on that upper range of protein intake to compensate for that lower digestibility and utilization of protein is going to be important, especially if somebody is like a, a vegan athlete, or, or even just muscle training regularly, you really want to make sure you're getting enough protein. Um, so, and there's a lot more also to be said about protein because we, we talked a little bit about those limiting amino acids. So some plant-based foods have um, an amino acid that another plant-based food might be missing. So combining those foods um, even if it's in within a 24 hour period, it doesn't have to be at the exact same meal, but combining those foods are going to give you that complete protein source. Yeah. You know, I, we found out too, when we were doing that, uh, that other, um, podcast where you can take two vegetable sources that maybe are a little on the lower side of quality, but they add up, those numbers add up. So if you combine them, you're moving up into the quality area, getting more of those amino acids. Yeah, good point. So, um, can you know, combining the foods, things like a, a classic example is black beans and rice. That's going to give you that complete, uh, very complete amino acid profile. Um, but there are other things like hummus and whole grains, um, pinto beans and corn. So, you know, there there are lots of options. Um, so menu planning will become important. And then we talked about. Um, vitamin C and iron combining those. So beans and salsa, broccoli and tofu, um, black eyed peas and collard greens. So iron rich foods, pairing those with the vitamin C rich foods. Um, Going back to that, the zinc issue with the absorption, um, soaking the beans and choosing leavened grains, you know, like bread versus crackers can actually help inhibit the phytates and increase the zinc absorption. Oh, good point. So that that reminds me of something I wanted to ask you. So you mentioned at the get go here that there are some vegans who follow a raw vegan diet, right? Do you always agree with that? Because I'm pretty sure I'm not a nutritionist, but I think I learned that there are some vegetables where you get more of the nutrition out of them when they are cooked a little bit. Yes. Uh, one example would be tomatoes. You get more lycopene um, when you cook the tomatoes. So, you know, it's. You know, if people want to do it, that's fine. But I, 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 I know it's a debate, but, you know, there are some, you know, like I, I also heard like the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, even if you just blanch them real quick. Yeah. 
you know, get them because when you do that to broccoli, it gets brighter. When you see that brighter green done, that's all you got to do. And now you're going to get some more of that nutrition. Well, well, I think with broccoli, that's an interesting example because I, th- I believe you get more sulforaph- sulforaphane, um, which is an anti-cancer compound found in broccoli when it's not cooked a lot. So maybe just that light blanching or having the broccoli raw. So well, gosh, a are, lot of great, in, yeah, a yeah. lot of great information, a lot of, um, and listen, a lot of debate out there. I bet that we're <laughs> going to have some comments about raw. No, only be raw. And all that's fine. That's great. We're not saying don't do it. You know, just there are things you just got to keep in mind, right? Some of these yeah. nutritional issues, the protein issue, maybe cooking lightly, some vegetables might be a little bit, just, you just got to keep that in mind. Uh, but this is fascinating information, Holly. Thank you for coming on. Um, you wrote an article, right? Nine common nutrition or nutrient deficiencies in a vegan diet. You can find that at lifeextension.com slash vegan. Check that out. And obviously you go into more of the, the research and uh, more details. Um, but besides that, if listeners want to follow you, um, where can they find you at on the internet? Yeah, so I would love if you can follow me on Instagram at Holly Ryan underscore RD. And my name is spelled with an I. So that's H-O-L-L-I Ryan underscore RD. And that's on Instagram. And then you can, of course, uh, find this article about vegan diets and the rest of my um, articles on the Life Extension blog at lifeextension.com slash wellness. Excellent. Holly, thank you for coming on. Uh, don't forget, you go to liveforeverish.com where you can download, like, and share many, many other podcasts. We're well over 450 now, Holly. Do you know that? That's a lot of podcasts. That's amazing. That's a lot of podcasts. Actually, I think it's way more than that now. I think that's an old number. Uh, but don't forget to subscribe. That way you never miss a show. So you can do that at liveforeverish.com. But our sponsor, Life Extension, wants to say thank you. If you head over to lifeextension.com, use the discount uh, code podcast and you can get 10% off $50 or more plus free shipping and handling. That's podcast at lifeextension.com. I'm Dr. Mike. Thanks for listening.